What is up, fisher people? You know, walleye fishing can get pretty expensive and complex, and sometimes with good reason, but if you're just taking a few trips a year, or maybe just getting into the game, you can put together one versatile setup to get it done in most all situations, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. That's a huge walleye. Hooked in the eye. Come here. <laughs> Stud walleye. So just being realistic, not everybody can afford, you know, eight St. Croix rods and a hundred different colors of crankbaits, chicken wraps, and God knows what else. And that's probably not even necessary most of the time. Fishing can be pretty simple, especially when the bite's good. If you want to make one setup that can get most of the jobs done without breaking the bank, that's entirely possible. Oh, and by the way, all the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna put links down in the description. So theoretically, you can put together this setup by just clicking links on this video and buying the stuff there online, ship to your door. You don't even have to leave the couch. Until you go fishing, then it's a good idea to leave the couch. Also, I do have affiliate relationships with some of these products. So if you do click them and buy them, I probably will get a cut of that, but it doesn't change what you pay. It just kind of helps support me and my channel and helps me continue doing videos like this. The first thing you're gonna need is one good spinning rod. Now, Fenwick happens to have a lot of rods at very good price points that have very good value in my opinion. I happen to use most all Fenwick rods even in my guiding setup, honestly. Um, I have a lot of HMX and HMGs, and if you wanna go even a little bit cheaper, you can go with the Eagle, which is about 55 bucks or something like that. It might give up a little bit in terms of sensitivity, especially jigging, but it can certainly work. I would go with something six and a half to seven foot, and if you start with a medium light, you can do some jigging as well as casting and get a lot of stuff accomplished. You might want to go with a fast action if you want a little more sensitivity for the jigging application. After that, of course, you need a spinning reel. I happen to go with a lot of Fluger Presidentials. That's a pretty good price point, right around $70. Um, you can also go with something like a Carbon X, like a Pissy Fun Carbon X, which actually has a really good deal going right now, I think for like 50 bucks or something like that. And there's also a, a Pissy Fun Flame, I think it's called, which is only like 18 or $20. So between that and the rod, you're starting off pretty good. Now, of course, you're gonna have to spool that with some line and nothing is more versatile than braided fishing line right around that 10 pound mark. And it lasts three to five years if you don't break it off or get it snagged on something. So you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of that for probably only 18, 20 bucks if you go with something like Power Pro, which I tend to run on pretty much every single rod I own except for my lead core rod. Now, if you're using braid, I recommend you use some kind of a clear leader monofilament if you want to go a little cheaper, fluorocarbon if you want a little extra abrasion resistance and you're not afraid to spend a few more extra dollars. A spool of monofilament will probably cost you like six bucks, like a Berkeley trialene, 10, 12 pounds, something like that. With the braided line, you're going to need 80 to 100 yards to spool up that reel and that $18 spool is 100 yards typically. So now that you got your whole setup there, you're gonna need some baits and some lures, right? And I, every time that I'm walleye fishing, I want a couple of things in my boat. I want a live bait presentation, if the fish are actively feeding, and I want a reaction bait type presentation, either if they're not actively feeding and you wanna trigger something, or if they're just super aggressive and going crazy, they'll hit anything and you don't need to use live bait. When it comes to live bait, it's hard to go wrong starting with a jig. You can get a package of Northland Fireball jigs for pretty cheap. If you're fishing from shore on a river, jigs are a great bet. If you're fishing from shore on a lake, a package of slip bobbers is a pretty good bet. And then of course, if you do have access to a boat with this setup, you can probably get by pulling bottom bouncers or Lindy rigs if you really want to, so you can throw some of those in the mix. And in terms of reaction baits, you definitely want to have some crankbaits available, casting, or if you got access to a boat, you could troll them with this rod potentially. I happen to love Berkeley flicker minnows and flicker shads. They're really good baits with really good action and they're usually only like five bucks a piece. Sometimes there's three packs for $12 or something like that. Great price point, but a great lure. Then you probably want some kind of plastic on board. I like Mimic Minnows because they're a quality bait with a really good subtle action and they come pre-packaged with the jig head. They're all put together so you don't have to worry about figuring out how to 
put a plastic on a jig or any of that sort of thing. But if you don't want that, like a Berkley Ripple Shad is a great thing that you can throw on a jig head or anything else that you can find really. There's paddle tails, there's split tails, there's curly tails, twister tails, all kinds of stuff depending on what might work that day. And then again, if you do have access to a boat, you might want to throw some jigging wraps in there. That's probably one of the more expensive things on this list, but if you can manage it and it works for you and you got a boat, I'd throw a few jigging wraps in the mix. So yeah, you put all that together, depending on how high of a price point you go on each of these individual items, you can be as low as 130, 40, 50 bucks or as high as maybe $250, but all things considered, about $200, fishing license, maybe a net, and your walleye fishing. There's a few things that you can't do with this. You're not gonna be able to pull lead core, for example. You're probably not gonna be able to run snap weights. You're not gonna run super big weights with the medium light rod, but 80% of the stuff that I do, I could probably get by using this. It probably is a little more effective for certain bait presentations to be using slightly different rods. Like jigging wraps, I'd probably use a little bit heavier. I wouldn't go with the medium light necessarily. But all in all, you can definitely get by. Like you're gonna get 80% of the work with 20% of the effort. You know, the old 80-20 rule here. And like I said, the line doesn't really matter. I'm using the same line on about everything except for lead core. You can get a ton of different presentations, live bait, artificials, and then you just go out and fish. Keep it simple, make it easy, and uh, hope you liked this video. If you did, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.